I, I want to skip ahead a little bit because there's a lot of Toronto FC supporters watching this tonight. Sure. Uh, they miss you up in Toronto as well. Yeah, it's, not, it's not easy going from one Canadian team to another, uh, but TFC were desperate for defenders at that time. They came off a season where they made the playoffs for the very first time, Stephen. Your buddy Justin Morrow was playing for the team. But there was four key players that they brought in that went from conceding 58 goals to I believe it was 34 or, or 36 goals your first year with the team. It was Clint Irwin, it was Stephen Batisher, it was Drew Moore, and Will Johnson. Tried, tested, and true domestic players. Was it a no-brainer at that time to join Toronto FC based on the potential of the group? Yeah, you know, I actually wanted to go to TFC when I was looking at teams from San Jose because yeah. Justin was there. And so I kept telling my agent, like, does, does Toronto need to write back? I really want to go there uh, because of the one aspect of grass. I didn't want to play an artificial turf. And so, um, unfortunately, they said, no, we don't need to write back. So I played my tears in Vancouver. And then when well, they was, needed to write back, <laughs> they said they needed to write back. And so I'm looking at Toronto where, look, I wanted to come there two years ago. This is great. Now you guys are interested. Um, and this is a team that scores a ton of goals. They, they scored 50. Oh, is that me? Or... I think it's you, but that's okay. Live Sorry. broadcast, Stephen. Live broadcast. Live broadcast, guys. <laughs> right. uh, so that was a team that scored 58 goals, but also gave up 58 goals. I'm coming from Vancouver where we gave up the fewest goals in the league or maybe the second fewest goals in the league, I can go there and help them. If they score the same amount of goals and I can help them give up less goals, that usually equates to something good. <laughs> so it was a no brainer to me. You know, obviously I talked to Justin all the time. And so I was super excited to go play with Michael Brady, Bradley, go to, to play with uh, Giovinco, to go play with Josie Altador. And then my buddy, Jamo, I'm like, this, this is going to be fun. And sure enough, it really was. The success came relatively quickly that season, but it, it, it takes a while for a group to come together. But defensively, that group was so much better. Um, you've played under Bob Bradley, Michael's father, and you played with Michael Bradley. Which individual is more intense to work with? Is it Michael or is it Bob? I want to say Michael. I know Bob can probably be more intense, but we had two very good years in LAFC so I everything kind of is is easier and happier when you're winning um you know there there were moments on the field with Michael where it's just like I think he might kill me right now <laughs> <laughs> so, That's, um, that, but that, it, it, it kind of balanced out things in the team because the dynamic it was really interesting at that time you had really a back line of all domestic American or, or that type of player. Yeah. Then you had flair players sprinkled out through the team, whether it was Armando Cooper and, and Benoit Sheru and of course, Javinko up top. And so you kind of needed that balance in the team. Yeah, you definitely need that balance. And I think a lot of teams in the league don't necessarily realize that. I see a lot of Central American, South Americans playing players coming over, but it doesn't necessarily... Um, work out you know you you have to have players that like drew Moore, like will johnson that have been in this league they know what it takes to win uh, because it's it's just not the same as other leagues that's like saying i can go to any other league and just have success immediately it's different there and so it that recipe that you know bez and that vanny that they put together it, it really worked out and you saw that that first year where you know we gave up maybe the second or third fewest goals in 16 and finished off third uh, in the conference. And it was really setting us up for the, for the next year. There were two lasting memories that year that kind of defined where the club was going to go for me, Stephen. Um, the Canadian Championship, Will Johnson breaking his leg right at the death, winning that championship against your former club. And then it was the Eastern Conference uh, Finals. Yeah. Both, both legs, really. The second legs remembered the most, but the first leg was crazy with the lines on the field. And, yeah. and then it's down three nil, nil, bringing two goals back. But it was that night under the lights, the Eastern Conference second leg. I mean, that for me was one of my best live footballing experiences that I've ever had. I mean, what was it like for you being in that atmosphere? The oh. mist, the rain, the, what, it was just, it was special. It really was special. And I think that was the best two-legged series in MLS history, honestly. Uh, just the atmosphere with the, the light drizzle, 
you had the smoke flares kind of going off, not too much where you couldn't see, but you could kind of sense it. You really had that true, like that European, they talk about European feel that had a European feel to it uh, as far as football matches go. And um, the fact that, you know, in the first leg, you know, we did lose, but we also scored two goals on the road. So we're coming back to our place with a ton of confidence. And, um, you know, for me specifically, personally, just to have that assist to Benoit um, that, you know, it was technically the winning goal to get us the next round. So I'll always cherish that game more than, the right, yeah. Game. yeah, just because it was so special for me um, personally, but just as a team, it was, it was honestly uh, one of the greatest moments of my career. Uh, unfortunately, two weeks later, you lost in a penalty shootout to the Seattle Sounders at home. It was so cold that night. Uh, you were still in the field. Were you, were you tempted to just put your hand up to take one? Were you on the yeah. list? Were you the next shooter? I was the next shooter, actually. I, I was seventh. Uh, Jamo was sixth. And I feel bad to this day because I think he gets a little bit of flack, which he shouldn't, for, you know, hitting the crossbar. But, you know, between us, I think Jamo will say the same thing. I'm a better penalty shooter but I was so dead my entire body was cramping up and I was so worried that I would just cramp up when I'm shooting this ball and scuff it and so I told him like if you feel better you take it and then I'll go after you but usually I would go first and so I felt so bad that he's getting this blame for hitting the cross I'm like guys like you you don't understand no one ever wants to miss a penalty you know it takes a lot of courage to go up there and, and take a penalty and and hit it with confidence, which he did. Uh, and so that, that moment was for sure tough, but man, did it drive our entire team, him, me, our entire team. It was, it was so much fuel to us. There was no off season. You guys just kept that running all the way to the next December when you went on and won that MLS cup. I mean, that for me, I, I understand that two teams since in the Red Bulls and LAFC have gone on to achieve more points in a season but that Toronto FC team, 2017, Stephen, it's hard for me to say there's ever been a better collection of players on the field. Just in ticking all the boxes, talent, determination, uh, the coaching, the system, just everything just ticked over. It was magical to watch that 2017 season. Yeah, and, and for me, it is the best team in MLS history. I know a lot of people ask me during our campaign last year with LAFC because we were breaking so many records. But at the end of the day, the only thing people look at our championships and so when that's the only team in MLS history to win the treble while you're also breaking the single season points record I don't there's no debate I don't know why people even ask me like oh well you played for both teams yeah but there's only one team to have won all three even if you say LAFC won two trophies it's like well they still got one more <laughs> so uh yeah it, for me that was by far the best team in MLS history and it, it, it will be it's tough to do when, I, when I'm asked about the biggest warriors in sport, your name now immediately comes to mind as one of the toughest dudes ever. Um, Canadian championship final. Another game that's remembered for a late goal by Sebastian Javinko. That day, I, I remember, we'll, we'll make sure we link to the video at some point. One of the most violent on-field collisions I've ever seen. Kyle Fisher, the Montreal Impact, crushed you. I was calling the game on radio that day. I sounded probably like a WWE announcer. It was like, Demolish! like I was going nuts because I couldn't believe what I saw. He wasn't sent off somehow and you were hurt. You were hurt bad. You finished that game and that night you couldn't sleep. And it turns out that you lacerated your pancreas for all you amateur doctors out there. That is a life-threatening injury. You lacerated your pancreas and you finished a championship match, Steven. That, that story is just one of the all-timers. Yeah, I, I didn't realize how stupid it was to finish the game. But I also didn't realize I had a lacerated pan pancreas. You know, I, I couldn't breathe. I did think I was going to die when I got hit. But when I went into the locker room and I was able to breathe again, I was like, okay, I think I'm all right. Is anything broken? The doctors checked me out. The trainers checked me out. They're like, nothing's broken, which they were right. My bones were fine. But they don't have x-ray vision. They can't see if my lacerate my uh, pancreas is lacerated and just bloods everywhere um so at the time I, I went back in and um 
there were there were a few moments where I, I really debated coming off probably the first five minutes in the second half. I was like, yeah, something's definitely wrong. Um, but there was a little hit between Fisher and myself around the fifth minute um, where I kind of got him back and I felt better. And I said, you know what? I, I think I can that. the rest of the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Very good. Adrenaline took over. <laughs> Uh, and then along the way, I mean, they've been replaying uh, a lot of these TFC games across that run, the fight in the tunnel with Altidore and, and the Red Bulls. Um, but the thing that sticks out the most to me is in the MLS Cup final, for really the first time all season, you guys change your formation. You were playing as an outside wing back all season. You came into a back four. Mm-hmm. When Greg Manny told you and the team about it, I mean, what was your reaction at that time? And how did it all come together to the point where that 2 nothing victory over Seattle, you completely played them off the field? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, th- I think it was a smart move. Just because that way we can get another attacking player onto the field. We had a feeling that they were going to try to sit in again, not have any shots on target again, and somehow hold up the trophy. And we're like, you know what? We're going to take it to them. And we did. And we, we, we took it to them again. Uh, thankfully, this time, the ball went in the back of the net because that should have been our second trophy for sure. I think they, they robbed us. And they'll admit to robbing us in 2016. But uh, it, was, it was just that, you know, for the type of season that we had all year of 2017 to finish it off the right way because not many teams can have a great regular season and then finish it off with an MLS Cup, you know, a la LAFC last year. Great group of guys as well. I, I, I mean, Stephen, that had to be like, I, I don't know if you experienced something with that kind of group of individuals very often in any walk of life. I mean, that was a special group. That's what made it that much more difficult after the party, after the parade, that that was your last game for Toronto FC. Yeah. It just seems like these contractual things unnecessarily moved you around to the point where people at the club told me after, and obviously things didn't go that well for Toronto FC after the CONCACAF Champions League, that they underestimated how much you leaving the team would mean for the group. I mean, you have to, it's probably no consolation, but you have to kind of feel the same way. Yeah. And it, it, I, it kind of hurts when I hear that because all the teams that I was with, I wanted to stay. They all know that they'll talk to any of the GMs and I have great relationships with all the past coaches and all the past GMs. And for whatever reason, you know, they just don't value me. What you said, they undervalue me or underestimate having me on the team. And I think a lot of that goes to what I do. I just, you know, I go under the radar, the way I play my game. I'm not flashy. I don't score goals. And so I think a lot of times people are like, yeah, we can replace them. We can get someone else. It's not a big deal. But um, every team, San Jose, Vancouver, Toronto, all of them said, man, we messed up by letting you go. Um, And it hurts because all three of those teams, I still want to be part of that team. And they were teams that we had so much success with. So I never want to leave something that was going so well with. 